Hey guys, it's Faces Sims, and we are back with more Voce Evermore. And I just. We need to start this with something fucking funny, okay? Because I had a ball with this last night, sitting there like, oh my god. Okay, so, some of you have probably been triggered about my pronunciations, and literally a couple parts ago, I asked, like, am I saying Marsh, right? Is it Marche? Like, am I wrong? And, guys, the first part of this just posted yesterday. Okay, literally just, what's today? Is today Tuesday? I think it's Tuesday. It was, it was yesterday. All right, so I went in and I'm like, I have the part posted and I went into comments. So this is just how you know how far ahead I am at this moment. Um, and I wanted to thank Blue Pengu for, I, I hope I pronounced your name right, for leaving a comment that put in some pronunciations. Okay, but we got to go through these because this shit's funny. All right, so um, left general pronunciations if anyone was wondering. Okay. From the Japanese dub. So, I actually wanted to say I take the Japanese dub with a grain of salt because, let's be real. English-speaking person has trouble speaking French. Me specifically, because I definitely don't know French. I'm pretty sure it's harder for someone who speaks Japanese to pronounce French. Because English and French are, a, it, like, usually for an English-speaking person, it's easier to learn French than it would be for someone who speaks Japanese to learn French. Like, just because the languages are so drastically different. And Japanese is pretty straightforward on when you see a vowel, it's pronounced the same fucking way, no matter how many times it's in that word. Unlike in romance languages where it's like, you got an E in there? Well, there's 37 different ways to pronounce that motherfucker. So, you know. So I do take Japanese dub or Japanese pronunciations of Frenchy words or whatever even Italian whatever words with a grain of salt, because I'm not 100% sure that's actually a right pronunciation. I'm not saying I pronounce it right. I know damn well I don't, okay? I know I don't. But also, I mean, the people who wrote the game and developed the game and put the names in there, they can decide. However, it's no different than a like a book, a fantasy book, where they're like, I know I spelled it this way, but this is how you pronounce it. So they can say however else they want to pronounce it. So... I'm not saying that the way I'm doing it's right, because I, one, I got one fucking right, though. I got one right, and one was, like, pretty goddamn close. The rest of them have been off, but but I'm just saying, some of them, I'm like, eh, I don't know that that's 100% right. It might be better than me, because I don't know French, so, like, okay, let's be real. So, um, and I hope, as, like, Blue Pengu pointed out, just say it however you want. Thank you. I appreciate that. I really did need that support, I'm not going to lie. Because I know damn well there's someone that's going to be like, Ugh! You're pronouncing it wrong! It's annoying! Because I'm that person. In my head, I would never say that to someone, to be fair, because it's like... But I will absolutely be that person that gets through when somebody says something different or wrong. I'm like, no. Stop it. <laughs> to myself. So, I get it. I get it. But like... You know, that's why I also don't make comments if somebody says something... And I'm like, that's not, I don't like that. Because I know I'm like, it's it's a personal thing, so. If you don't like the way I pronounce something, keep it to yourself. Thanks to the people who are going to be like, just do whatever. But anyway, the whole point of this is I thought some of these were funny. And I'm going to go through and read them because, you know, some of them I'm like, yeah, that makes more sense. And other ones I'm like, fuck no, there's no way in hell I'm doing this. We're not even... We're how many parts in now? Are we like 16, 17? I don't even know where we are anymore. It's so we're stuck with my pronunciations. Some of them because I, I'm just stuck here and others because fuck no, the real way they pronounce it, I hate it. For example, I say Lycoris. You know, a couple of times at this point, this is why this comment's funny. A couple of points I've said licorice and I'm like, ooh, no, I hate that. That's apparently how they pronounce it in the dub. And I hate it. I hate it. I have a visceral physical reaction where like my shoulders jam up into my ears and my spine just wants to curl up into a ball. And I feel all jiggly and wiggly like a ball of goo from saying licorice. Like licorice. Licorice doesn't bother me aside from licorice is disgusting. 
The word doesn't bother me. But like, licorice? Ugh. I don't know. I can't. Guys, I don't care if that's right. If licorice is wrong, I don't want to be right because the other version is gross. It's gross. I don't like it. Okay. I don't like it. So anyway. <laughs> Oops, but oh well. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. I like it better the way I say it because otherwise I, I, you don't want me to vomit every time. Also, apparently it's relivers, not relivers. I kind of see the logic because you're re-aliving yourself, but you're also re-living. So, and reliver. Uh, listen, it's the same way with the Sims. They're like, it's live mode. And I'm like, so live mode. <laughs> so whatever way you're supposed to say it, I say it backwards. We're going, we're going to keep it with relivers. I don't think it really, it's semantics. Either way works, but um, I like that. And Adolphe doesn't actually have the E pronounced. And as pointed out, that's unfortunate. So yeah, I agree. I think you were on the same page. Listen, listen. All of these so far that have posted at this point, um, which has really only been the first week. Not They haven't posted up, but they're uploaded. They're all demonetized, basically, because I'm gonna guess for the unaliving talks. So I'm really not going to push YouTube's button by throwing in some Adolfe without the E. If you, hi, his name's on the screen right now. You know exactly how that's supposed to be pronounced. No, girl, no, no. Mm. It's unfortunate for him and we're not going to associate him with Nazis. So we're just going to straight up leave the E. I think to be fair, when I first saw his name and I first saw like the game information, I was like, yeah, I don't know if you're supposed to pronounce it this way, but I'm gonna, because otherwise, bad choice. Although now it makes me wonder, did you name him that for a reason? Should I be concerned? The answer is probably yes, to be fair about this game. I say Cohen, and it's supposed to be like Kune. The Ne makes sense because of how it's spelled, and Ne would be how you would say N-E Japanese. But Kune just sounds... Part of me is like, okay, it sounds like a fancy name, but it also sounds kind of inappropriate in a weird way. So I'm going to stick with Cohen just because, I, one, I think I'm just stuck with it. We're stuck with it. My favorite, my favorite, you've probably already seen these by the time you get this comment. Yeah, <laughs> you know how we roll here, is Cheetahs. Now I realize now I'm like, yeah, that was probably the whitest white person American way of saying that, but I don't know how they got shooty out of it. I'm sorry. Did you just have a weird flashback that you were in like a toddler show? Like some kind of show for kids where everything is like primary fucking colors and houses were just squares with triangle roofs? Because that's exactly the weird mental image that pops in when I say shooty. We're not doing that. Although maybe the D.I.S would be more of a D sound. But I don't know how they got shooty out of that. And I just feel like we're on a toddler show if I say it. And it just makes me want to giggle. So I'm not doing that. Cheetahs is really offensive. It just sounds... Well, not really offensive. It just sounds... You're like, God, don't you know how to read words? That's what it sounds like. But it actually makes me too. Because I was like, well, maybe you combine it and it's cheaty. And then I'm like, like, cheaty and a gonye? Like, we're on... A good place. <laughs> and then that made me laugh too. We're going to keep going with cheetahs, even though that's wrong. I got Karoon right. So good for me. And Cernival is Cernival. So instead of Cernival, Cernival. Slightly more flair, but I guess that's my white American accent. So we're just going to go with that. So, but I liked, I was calling it Boreo, but yes, they pronounce it more like Buro. And I thought when I looked at that, I'm like, yeah, you know what? That makes logical sense because like the name Bo, E-A-U, and this is R-E-A-U. So yeah, I should have realized that when I looked at it. But let's be fair. Every time I start a game, I get like stage fright of like giving voices to the characters. We do the same damn voices, but I'm always like, okay, okay, let's okay. You know this by now. So when I'm faced with a word that I'm like, I don't fucking know what that is. It, I, there's always this moment of panic of like, I am stupid and I don't know words and people are going to judge me. Like, I, I'm not going to know every fucking word that ever existed. So I don't know why that bothers me, but it does. But it's because you're recording. So you're like, ah, I am 
recording and everything is awkward and weird and oh no. So, and I don't have enough time. Like, normally you'd sit there and you're like, oh, and then you take time. But when you're reading out loud, it's more like, it's like someone's watching you read, even though nobody is, to be fair. at the You know what I mean? Anyway, that might make sense to people. It might not. But, so... Yes, yeah, so the row part makes sense. Budo doesn't make sense. Boro kind of makes sense. Budo actually sounds like you're saying it with a Japanese accent. So, But I do think the row part's right. So we'll kind of adjust and instead of Boreo, it'll be like Boro. Kind of try to get it to write. So I'll try to do that. Um, I'm probably going to fuck up because, again, I'm stuck in my pattern. But we'll try to fix that. This was the funniest one to me. So I agree with you. Um, Cyan. Is Sheehan or Sian? And I can understand the Sheehan part because that definitely sounds like Japanese accent trying to pronounce Sian. Okay. Because like she, S H I, she, and like that is definitely using Japanese syllables, you know? Um, but what I don't get is Rofiwa's? Where the fuck is the W? No! That ain't French. That's like German. Doesn't German throw random fucking W's into things? French throws a bunch of fucking, like, seven... You want to say the O sound, and you put every other fucking vowel in there. And German, I feel like, is the one that's like, let's just throw some random W's and B's into everything. <laughs> this is why American... or This is American. This is why English is stupid, because we steal all the dumb shit from all the other languages that make no fucking sense. Did I throw in that that's why I like Japanese? It's fucking logical. If you see an E, it's pronounced the same motherfucking way every single goddamn time. Unlike in English or other Romance languages where that's pronounced 42 different t ways in that sentence. And that's obnoxious and stupid. <laughs> English really is a stupid language. Apparently so is French, but... I don't know how we got she and Brofiwas as, like, where's the, I'm going to keep it the way I say it, because, like, I may not be right, but I don't think Brofiwas is right either, and if it is, French is really dumb. Anyway. But I, I did like the, pronounce the shit however you want. Uh, uh, and then looking for, and then I like, and then I left a comment like, oh yeah, no, some of these are bonkers, right? And we got a reply, too. That's fun. I'm sure I'll get used to whatever you say. I hope you did. I hope you did. I really did. Follow your heart. <laughs> uh, anyway, thank you for those, though, because I did enjoy reading that. And I was like, bro, that, that one was my favorite. Like, dude, poor Cyan. Anyway, um, I'm probably not going to correct the way I say anything, except for Boro. We'll try to do that with a little accent and do the row part because that made actual logical French sense. You know, I was like, mm, actually now knowing the few things that I know with like Blanche Devereaux, R-E-A-U-X, okay? And Bo, B-E-A-U, it always sounds like row. So it made sense that Boreo or R-E-A-U would be Boro. That makes sense to me. I don't know about Boro. That actually might be totally right. But... Ew, but the row part abs 100% makes sense to me. So, but I'm not saying licorice. Ugh, gross. Ah, Ugh, guys, it physically hurts. We would never get through this game, but thank you for those. That was a fun time. I hope you guys had fun with some of those pronunciations and seeing how bastardized I made it. But to be fair to me, um, even when they put like French words in, right? Think about it. Like, the poor Japanese voice actors have to read this. Don't know how to pronounce French unless they speak French. They're probably like, the fuck is this shit? Just like we are. Or I am. So they just do the best they can, and they've got, like, Japanese accents when they say it. So it's not 100% right. And we're like, yeah, what ups? So I feel like it should be okay that my American-accented ass cannot pronounce French properly. Like, I don't have to say croissant. It's a croissant. Okay. I'm American. That's how we say it. All right. To be fair, you, like if I were walking around, he's going to get a croissant. I sound like a douchebag. So, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So like, 
eh, if I'm pronouncing the words wrong, we're Americanizing them. So, is okay. Get over it if you don't like it. I mean, I'm sure by now you've been so triggered by the things that I've said you probably left, because... So, if you're still around watching this, you're suffering with everybody else, or you're suffering through, or you're like, who cares? I don't know how to pronounce it either, so... We're all good! Anyway. But, that was fun. Good times. And I'm gonna keep saying Marsh until someone tells me it's Marche. And then I'll try to fix it. Because every once in a while when I say Marsh, I'm like, that sounds wrong. It's starting to sound wrong now, but... Someone will get to that. Don't worry. Anyway, now that we're like 20 minutes into this part, I just wanted to share that with you because it was fun times. Fun learning times. I don't even remember where we were because it's been like three days since I got to record this. So. With a strange encounter ending on an even stranger note, Adolphe, we're not calling, <laughs> headed back to the core base. As for me, after doing groceries at the Marsh, or Marche, who knows, I headed back to the orphanage to deliver the eggs, but something about Jean didn't seem right. It worried me quite a bit. Hey, at least I looked up the names ahead of time and sort of maybe kind of pronounced them sort of okay. Except for she and Brofiwas. <laughs> there was... I didn't, uh, to be fair, I didn't look up science name because I figured that was self-explanatory. I looked up Capucine. I didn't need Jean. Because Jean-Luc Picard of the Star Trek Enterprise. So, I. I'm a big Trekkie. I know that. I got that. <laughs> so I headed back to the Claude family mansion to be with Mathis and await Jean's return. And to be fair, for Mathis, it could be Mathie. For all we know. It could just be Matthew. You don't know. If they want me to say things right, they should give me a guide. But he didn't show up at all, even after dinner time. Uh-oh. <gasps> we got a new CG. Look at that. Jean really is late. Yes. And making matters worse is that he isn't able to see his lover. Jean's a really nice person. And he must be hurt by what was said to him earlier. I was drying Mathis's wet hair after his bath, since Jean wasn't here to do so himself. Was the earlier when <laughs> she and Brophy was? <laughs> was that when he, like, insulted Jean's girlfriend? Anyway. Mathis was worried about his butler's whereabouts, but I'm concerned, too, because I don't trust that this game wouldn't kill him. Oh, um, it's good enough. My hair will dry naturally. He must have noticed that the way I dried his hair was different from how Jean did it. My way of doing it must be making him feel uneasy. Absolutely not. Your hair is really pretty, so it needs to be dried well. And if you catch a cold from this, you won't be able to work on your novel. Are you treating me like a child? Huh? That we're only one year apart. I can hear the frustration in his voice. He's starting to fall in love with us. Does he have his knees up to his chest? <laughs> Yes, I know that. I may have treated you like a child before, but over time I stopped seeing you as a boy and started seeing you as a man. Oh. Earl. Then it's fine. I don't want to be treated like a child, but spending time with you like this makes me very happy. <laughs> One day, he giggled before he continued. Hey, it'd be all right if I touched your hair too. Sure. Not that my hair is anything special. A so romantic. I carefully worked his hair in a way that was, that hid my flustered expression. Worked on his hair, sorry. I gently lifted up the back so that I could dry his nape when... On the back of his neck, I discovered a small round mark that appeared to be a wound or a bruise. It looks like a button! I can't zoom in on the CG. But, like, that doesn't look like a wound or a bruise. That looks like a... Is he a robot? We have fake body. Are you a robot? Ah, oh, what are you hiding? What is this? Don't push it! That's his off switch! Out of curiosity, I touched the mark. Eek! Uh, I'm sorry. I was concerned by this mark on the back of your neck. That is, like, 3D. <laughs> this is another one of your pranks. You're always up to some mischief. Me? Up to mischief? I don't 
remember pulling any pranks on Mathis before. Oh, that's awkward. You push that button and he got the mischief. Mathis? Are you falling asleep? I looked at the clock and noticed how late it had gotten. Snoring. Okay. As expected, Mathis had fallen asleep in a peculiar fashion. That just sounds like he... Oh my god, is he a wind-up boy? Is that like where you put the key in and you wind him up? He's like... Oh my god. <laughs> it wasn't a mark. It was literally like a button. It was 3D, guys. You saw it right. Time with you like this. Please. Last forever. He murmured happily as he drifted into a peaceful slumber. Maybe his parents were pissed that he wasn't right because they tried to make a machine boy and he didn't come out perfectly like they wanted. At that moment, the heavy door opened quietly, bringing in an unusual interruption to his sleep. I have returned. I do apologize for the inconvenience. Some guests have arrived for you and the master. Behind Jean was... Our other boyfriends! Something's happened that we need to share. A dolphin company were here in their corps uniforms. The sound of their footsteps and the sight of them all together was enough to have Mathis wide awake in an instant. Missing prostitutes? Look at, look at his little nightgown! It's so pretty! You know what's interesting? We were drying the nape of his neck and we saw that thing, but he's also still wearing his choker. Who I... That, like, did they just forget that? It was that, like, we're just gonna keep it there for flair? Because, like, why would you still be wearing that on your nightgown? You're gonna choke to death in your sleep. Mathis raised his head abruptly at Adolphe's report. What? I thought he died. Uh, so you guys knew already, huh? When we first met, it sounded you knew. It sounded like you knew what was going on. Yes, but, um, for some reason, Mathis looked at me reluctantly. If it's a private matter, I can leave the room. I'm like, I'm not a prostitute, so I'm not too concerned. No, I want to make sure you know what's going on, too. You're a girl, so there's no guarantee you won't be involved in this mess. What are you implying, sir? Are you implying you can pay me for sexual favors? Because, like, I'd have done them for free, but, like, if you're going to pay me, sure, why not? <laughs> mean exactly? Mathis and the others nodded to each other, and Eve continued. Do you remember when I asked you and Lucas about the woman we were looking for? Well, this particular woman was a prostitute with clients in the Cheetahs District. In the Shooty District. <laughs> I'm sorry! I cannot take it seriously if we're supposed to pronounce that Shooty. Like, it's... It sounds like something a six-year-old would make up. Stop it. Huh? I mean, Cheetahs doesn't sound great. Cheetahs actually sounds horrible, but... He then went into detail. It started in Cohen a few years ago. Women began to disappear on a periodic basis, many of them who made their living as prostitutes. Some cases were pursued after their friends grew concerned that they might have been involved in accidents. But whether they were dead or alive... Everything was left unexplained, and things had come to a standstill. I never knew what was happening in our... I never knew that was happening in our neighborhood until recently. About the more we asked around, the more we, would, we discovered similar incidents from just the past few weeks. Which is why we opened an official investigation and found out that this has been happening for years. And that's what he wanted to talk to me about back then. It wasn't because of a report to the Corps, but from someone who put in a work order to find a friend who owed her money. They soon found out this person could somehow be linked to those who went missing. With that, the Corps belatedly joined the investigation. <laughs> I didn't know there were other cases aside from... Oro? Oro. Not Borio. Oro. Oros. Okay. Listen, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try, but I have to stop and think about it, so... Why the core? I mean, if it's related to Cheetahs too, wouldn't the Royal Guard 
Do you seriously think a bunch of good-for-nothings would worry about prostitutes? Well, yeah, because who's going to have sex with them then? You know? Oh, right. The prostitutes weren't having sex with them either, so never mind. <laughs> That's a ticket to the Royal Guard, because even the prostitutes don't want to slum it with them. Well... Well, look at that. You're trying to tell me you're actually worth more than this? See, the prostitutes have higher standards than these fuckers, so. And, like, listen. Even a dude who might be down on his luck, I don't have a lot of money. Listen, I'll throw It's okay. You seem nice. But, like, the Royal Guard, they're like, nah, fuck that shit. You could pay me double my usual rate, and I still wouldn't slum it with you fuckers. So, uh, you know. That's why they're not going to look for the prostitutes. It's pretty funny, actually. Not for the prostitutes, but it's just... Like, pretty funny that the prostitutes would turn down the royal guard. <laughs> Women like you with a body that's forever sullied would be lucky to get a piece of copper. No one else would pay, pay more for a disgusting body like yours. I recalled when I went to Cheetahs and saw some royal guard soldiers treating her like a mere object. They didn't see her as a human being or a reliver. They couldn't care less about any missing prostitutes. I frowned at the memory of them mocking her back then. Sensing that I felt disturbed, Hugo continued without waiting for my response. And so as we discussed the incident, it struck us. That was bright. I'm sure the other incident was the result of similar motivations. What do you mean by the other incident? Something else happened? Uh, yes. Recently, there have been... A master. In regards to that incident... It is mere speculation at this time. In addition, I'm afraid the nature of the matter is not one for a lady's ears. I kind of forgot about that, so you know what? I'm glad they did the flashback here. Uh, I, I see. Right. Thank you for stopping me, Jean. You remembered a certain butler and his master, master whispering about it before? They were suspicious when they heard it was a topic not to be brought up in front of a lady. So they decided to come here to ask Jean and Mathis what they knew. They ran into Jean on the way, who invited them here after they explained their purpose. So then, are we on to something here? I suppose there's no use in concealing the truth at present. Yeah, especially now that it might affect her safety. Mathis straightened his back, then began to tell Adolphe and the others what he was going to say back then. As you know by now, Jean and I were aware of the missing, missing prostitutes, but we and the Royal Guard thought that they were abducted by Boro, since new victims were found later that day. That time. If we just caught him, both cases would be settled. No wonder you guys didn't want to talk about it in front of her. Only women were targeted, and most were those who made a living through prostitution. The results are unfortunately no surprise. It was clear no one wanted to talk about it, but the silence on the matter spoke volumes. The suspect was, de was a deranged serial killer who was well known for murdering his victims through horribly cruel methods. Meanwhile, the quiet disappearance of women remained obscured, but they met the same tragic outcome no matter who the culprit was. After Boro's death, I thought that would put an end to the disappearances. So why... Could it be that the suspect wasn't Boro, but someone else? Well, I think that's the case, but... But it happened on the same day. If this were someone else, they couldn't have known when Boro was going to strike. We can't jump to the conclusions now before we get more info. And we also didn't think that he was dead, remember? Uh, because I'm pretty sure he's Lucas. <laughs> like... Or you just reused Lucas's sprite, and you were like, let's just reuse him and pay up, because, like, they have the same poses! Come on! None of the other characters have the same poses! And for the time being, let's ask around places where these ladies are known to hang out. Spacey, you be careful, too. And don't even think about walking alone at night. Yes, I'll keep that in mind. About the missing women. Mind any leads, we'll let everyone know right away. Okay, but it's night, so I gotta go home. Jean accompanied Adolphe and the others back to the entrance so they could resume their night patrol. Mathis offers to, 
offered to escort me back to the orphanage before it got too late at night. Oh, okay. I, I was like, they're going to let our wayfish little boyfriend walk me back. But like, okay. I, well, we also know what happens if someone tried to attack us and he gets pissed. You just ram a car into them, so. Sorry, I didn't tell you earlier about the missing women. You don't need to apologize. I know you were just looking out for me, Mathis. Besides, the old me would have seen it and even would have seen it in an even more negative light. I would have been convinced that I had something to do with it and probably would have hated myself more. Mathis breathed a sigh of relief as he heard my explanation. But I continued to feel unnerved by the situation as a whole. Eh, understandable. This game is going to be that. We're going to be unnerved by the game as a whole. There. And now that things have gotten worse, we can't have you working the same schedule. If for your own safety, you shouldn't work until evening anymore. No, you should stay away from Cheetah's itself for a while. Even the daylight hours could be dangerous. I understand. I'm a little sad about it, though. I was having fun working with you on your novel. Me too. But, but I can still go to the orphanage to see you. I might not be able to every day, but if I do go, I'll be with my novel like before. Yes, of course I will. Oh, I forgot. I'm able to read the book you bought for me more easily now. If you come visit, I can show you one of the poems I really like. How I can't wait. It might even help with my writing. Our happy conversation brought us to an alley where... We were suddenly drenched by a rain of blood. Oh, that's more... Wor that I thought it was going to be an alley where... And I'm like, uh... And then you saw the blood spatter. I was like, oh, we saw blood spatter. No, we got drenched with blood. Huh? Oh, that was Mathis saying that. Huh? Sorry. In an instant, Maya and Mathis' clothes were soaked. Good God. As we looked to see where it came from... What do you think we're going to see? A harsh smell of iron struck our senses. A woman lay in a pool of red and... Uh, no! Sis! Sis! A young boy wailed and clung to her clothes. And there stood... Uh, the man we had pursued desperately. It was like... And then we looked and I was waiting for them to... I'm like, you know it was going to be Bordeaux. Uh, we should have died in a deluge of... Deluge of acid. Deluge? told you he wasn't dead. I told you! It was fake! Because Lucas was with us the whole time. And they wanted it to be like, oh, okay, it's not... Li Listen. Listen. I can understand you not being sus of Lucas if you didn't realize the poses were the same. And I wouldn't have been sus of him either. I'm just sus because the poses are the same. And why would you reuse the sprite poses? You know what I mean? Unless you wanted to hint. You know? You're... The worst killer in history who had executed so many people. So many innocent people, sorry. Why? What was going on? How would he come back from the dead? Oro glanced at us for a short moment before turning away with disinterest. He then looked down at the young boy, clinging to his sister. He aimed his bare hand at the woman, I thought when I heard the gushing noise that he killed the poor kid, and thrust his hand into her chest. With a forceful tug, he pulled out the heart that stored her emotions. A shower of blood rained down once again. Well, that's horrible. Uh, uh, no, sis! Sis! The young boy's scream sent chills across my skin. He was going to be killed next. I need to save him! No, Lucas ain't gonna touch him. I need to get him out of here! My mind was telling me what to do, but fear completely bound me in place. Then Mathis, who had been watching the same scene unfold by my side, No! Brother! Brother! Please wake up! Don't leave me behind! Why? Why? Why did my brother... What did my brother do to deserve this? That's not baby Mathis' voice, but like, whatever. Listen. Ah! With the smell of iron in the wind, he quickly vanished. Colliding blades rang through the alley. Never again! I will have you suffer the same pain my brother experienced with my own hands, Boro! How do they know it's Boro? Like, how do they know his name? Do they just give it to him and he's like, I... 
Take it. Better than calling me Clancy, I guess. Moro blocked the strike from Mathis's blade, but in the next moment, I noticed Mathis's eyes were completely dark and empty. It's because he got that fucking kill switch in his back of his neck! Mathis, stop! My surprise, it was Boro who responded, not Mathis. He res I'm like, he can't respond, we know his voice. He should have found it easy to secure a victory, but instead he swiftly left back. Before he knew it, he had landed on top of a wall that towered over all of us. See? Again, this is his Spider-Man shit. So this is what I'm saying. He was running down alleys and Mathis could hit him with a car? That was sus as fuck, okay? Because we saw him bing, bing, bing off and he's doing it again. So no way. There was no way in hell that we could have caught up to the real Boro in a fucking car and plowed into him. Okay? So you had to know it was fake then. Also because Lucas was with us and I mean, you're not getting away. Mathis did his best to try and chase after him, but I grabbed him from behind and somehow forced him to stop. Mathis, you can't beat him if you go after him alone. I can't leave the boy alone either. Shut up. Let me go. I don't have the right to get in the way of my revenge. Let me go, death. Huh? Well, fuck. That's that, that's that switch on the back of his neck. My vision went white, and before I knew it, I was rolling on the ground. Huh? My head hurt. I didn't have a clue why or how I was on the ground like this. The only thing I knew was... The young boy was crying and looking at me with concern. Because he's like, what just happened to my sister? I'm like, bitch, you okay? Like, it's kind of funny because, like, there is something that... That mark looked like a button, okay? Or a knob or a switch or a plug or a keyhole, some shit. You know what I mean? Um, and I definitely feel like there's something about that that's... Like, I mean, obviously, like... I feel like that has something to do, possibly, with its rage trigger. You know what I mean? To be fair, also, even without that, his brother was murdered, and he's so hell-bent on revenge that he's got this rage trigger that, of course, he's going to say something he didn't mean to us. You know what I mean? Mathis was here in front of me just a moment ago, but now he had completely vanished from sight. But I do like that instead of soft and docile, he's like, let go of me, death! Knocks you down and runs away, and you're like, the fuck? I like it. I like the character depth here. He's a little crazy. I don't know if I read that, but now he completely vanished from sight. Still unsure of what happened, I somehow got up from the ground. The young boy then tugged on my clothes with a hand that was wet with blood. Just please help. Your chest. It keeps bleeding. Seeing him exhausted from all the crying made me immediately realize that the woman didn't have a backup. She couldn't be saved. If so, then the least we can do is cover her chest. I dragged myself to her as I couldn't get my head to stop throbbing. I spread my handkerchief over the gaping hole in her chest when I noticed the sheen of her black hair soaked with blood. Uh, oh no. It's not the prostitute we like confronted the guards with. Uh, I knew who this was. A strong, confident, and beautiful woman who didn't let herself be defined by scathing words. When she said the sheen of her black hair, I was like, oh, damn. The prostitute we just remembered earlier. You, you saved me this time, but don't ever get in the way of my work again. But, well, thanks for saving me. I'll choose better clients next time. This is the address of our brothel. I can give you all a special discount if you visit as customers. Uh, if you do decide to visit, be sure to come see me before I leave that place and fulfill my dream. Why? Why you, of all people? I thought you told me back then that we could meet again. This is just the start, okay? Because, like, prostitute didn't have a sprite. The little kids, nobody out, but, like, they're, they're killing all these people, and you're like, now they're getting, it's not just random people, random people, you know what I mean? You know, where you're like, okay, it's this random kid, or this random prostitute. Now it's like a prostitute you met. So they're hitting a little closer to home, so that when they kill, like, Hugo, or Jean, or one of our boyfriends, it's gonna be like, why? I should have seen it coming! I know it's gonna happen, but I'm still gonna be devastated. Later... 
The Royal Guard arrived, hearing the commotion. Adolphe and the others came a while later, and I told them that Boro had appeared once again. Like, why are you alone? My head was struck hard, and the young boy lost his sister. Are you sure it was his sister? It might have been his mom. You don't know. So both of us were taken to Dr. Campesine's hospital to make sure we were fine. Fortunately for me, the bruise I took to the head wasn't bad, but... That little boy took a hell of a lot more of a bruise to his psyche. The, the master... He hasn't yet returned to the mansion this morning. Uh... That's right. I guess I really am death, the bringer of misfortune. I finally realized that the young man who sought happiness for himself opened the curtains of vengeance once again. Ooh, chapter three. Again, I'm not sure who's supposed to be... You'd think it'd be math. I should have checked that. Anyway. I threw away my promised future and position. What I sought was to offer a new form of happiness to the woman who had unreasonably lost her place. My dear, dear friend, I will offer my wisdom and loyalty for our friendship. I'm just going to read it like Ronco. And his voice changes every single fucking time he's not around enough. A few days had passed. The appearance of Boro was reported immediately to the Royal Guard and the Royal Family, but they hadn't given any specific orders, so Adolphe and the others were frustrated, unable to take much action. As for me, the bandage wrapped around my head was slowly being removed. What voice did we give Capacy? I don't remember his voice. I really don't. Alright, whatever. My advice would be for you to stay a few more days, but at the very least, I could confirm your head and skull are sound. So you're free to leave. I'll prescribe some painkillers, so take them if you experience headaches. I feel like kind of haughty voice. This works for him, I guess. I can't remember what we gave him last time. Understood. Thank you very much for your time, Doctor. I feel like he'll be around more in Lucas's route, so... Come now, we've known each other since those incidents. He went on to say that I probably shouldn't see another doctor since the royal family hadn't publicly announced what happened. Dr. Capucine continued to speak in a calm manner as he recalled the incident that threw the country into chaos. I must say, I'm surprised you got away with only a bruise after being hit by that murderer. I can't tell if you were lucky or not, to be honest. He was wrong. The reason why I'm still alive is because it wasn't Boro who struck me. I didn't remember clearly, but I had to understand my situation. Mathis was intent on going after Boro, so he struck me in the head, then disappeared. But it seemed like he hadn't returned to the Claude family mansion at all. Even Adolphe seemed to have a hunch as to who actually hit me, but I kept quiet on the matter, so they respected my silence and didn't say anything not angry or holding a grudge about being hit. His brother's killer, who we thought was dead, had returned. His sister was killed in front of her younger brother. I knew what Mathis felt about his brother and how he respected him, which was why I couldn't blame him for going mad with rage as he saw his own past through what happened. Still, You don't have the right to get in the way of my revenge! Let me go, death! I was very confused by how Mathis yelled. He even looked like a different person. I see you've left the hospital. I'm very relieved that you're well. And that said, I'm truly sorry for what the Master has done. What do you mean? I don't remember anything about what happened when I was hurt. I have no idea what you mean, Jean. Seeing me force out a smile, Jean quietly lowered his head. Besides, I'm actually more worried about you, Jean. You look pale. From the looks of it, you probably haven't slept in a long while. Perhaps you should get some rest. Absolutely not. After all, I do not know when the Master will be back. As the Claude family's butler, I must wait until the Master returns. If that's the case, then let me keep watch while you get some rest. Please. We've caused enough trouble to you already, so any more is simply too much. At this rate, you're going to collapse before Mathis returns, Jean. Imagine what would happen if Mathis saw you unconscious. Blame yourself enough for not being fit to be a butler, don't you? 
I haven't submitted my resignation, so I'm still your workmate and friend. If you need help, please let me be of assistance. The master has really found a wonderful friend indeed. Thank you very much. If you don't mind, then, I will accept your offer. I watched as Jean walked into his room, collapsed on the bed, and immediately fell asleep. I let out a quiet sigh. I told him he should rest, but I'm the one who brought misfortune to this place. To be honest, I was planning on leaving after checking on the situation here, but I was so worried of the worry of the two of them, about the two of them, that it ended up involving myself even more. This, where are you? Your other brother's so worried about you. I changed into my maid uniform and went around the mansion to see if there were any chores to be done. Apart from some light dust here and there, I didn't see much that needed to be done, especially after seeing enough food in the storage. I sat alone in the guest room, sipping some tea to pass the time. I thought of cleaning the place a bit, but it would defeat the purpose if Jean woke up from any noise I made. I never knew this mansion could be so quiet. This hour was usually much busier. I would usually be enjoying lunch with Jean and Mathis around now. Not that we were a very lively bunch. Sometimes it would get quiet while we eat, but he would then mumble to himself about how good the food tasted. Not hearing his praise now, I never knew how lonely it was here. I didn't have it in me to pass the time idly in the guest room. <laughs> with no real objective, I went inside Mathis's room. Maybe it was from the room being empty for a few days, but the light shining inside was making the dust in the air sparkle. His study tools were there, and his pens were completely dry. Uh, I then looked at the writing paper strewn about the floor. I randomly picked up one of the sheets. It must have been written on recently, as the last sentence was still incomplete. He was probably having fun writing this. That's when Mathis finally began to move forward in life, too. Why did Boro have to come back to life now? It may have been the fir it may have been the first time I had ever held a grudge against someone. I should talk to Mathis about this newly written portion of his story when he returned. I held my breath the moment I felt something cold touch my neck. Oh, it's you, M Mathis? The person I was thinking about had returned. He appeared silently with a knife brandished against my neck. As strange as it sounded, being able to see him made me more happy than afraid. W welcome back! Where have you been all this time? Jean and everyone else was worried about you. More importantly... You hurt! Don't tell me you fought Boro all by yourself! Shut up! Huh? Disgruntled, he put his knife away and began rummaging through his desk without another word. So confused, I continued talking to him. Oh, um, you won't be stepping out again, will you? Huh? Boro's still out there, so of course I'm gonna be leaving. One of my knives broke, so I came to get a spare. Huh? Continued to look inside his desk and carelessly stepped on his writing papers on the floor. W what are you doing? Aren't those part of the novel you were writing? Why are you stepping on... Papers won't help me exact my revenge. Throw them away. Taking up too much space on my desk. What? With that, he purposely trampled on his story. Force him to stop or plead for him to stop. Oof. I feel like forcing him is not going to work. He's just going to knock our ass out again. Pleading might get to him, but it also might piss him off. I'm not really sure. I would go with plead. Oh, no, we forced. Damn, I'm not good at picking these. Force him to stop. Stop! I instinctively reacted, shoving Mathis away and picking up the papers from the floor. Most of them were creased with footprints on them, but fortunately none of them were torn. What was that about? Unlike the Mathis I knew, he looked down at me with unbelievably cold eyes. I couldn't let him intimidate me. This is your most precious treasure! Even you don't have the right to trample on it like this! I glared at Mathis as I embraced the papers in my arms. Please stop already! I held the wrinkled papers close to my chest as if I were protecting my child. Mathis, you're mistreating your love and talent for novels, who 
which you share with your brother. You're trampling on yourself right now. Are you so fixated on revenge that you can't even see what you're doing? Or do you think taking your anger out on this will help you with, help you with your vengeance? Without a word, he pounded the desk with his fist. Well, hopefully we're being loud enough to wake Sean up. He pounded the desk over and over again, as if he were trying to overcome me with sound. Stop acting like some saint, will you? You don't have the right to stop me from getting revenge. You're always getting in my way. You keep saying you're supposed to be deaf, but... You haven't lost a single person dear to you. There's no way you'd understand how I feel. Not one bit. Not yet we haven't. We've also lost a lot of random people, but... He raised his fist to strike me from above. Jean. Master! What in the world are you doing? I heard steps. Also, he raised his fist, and I was like, this is when John jumps in and saves me. How am I supposed to not be in love with this man? He just saved me from getting a fist in my face. A shout resounded throughout the room. Before trying to understand the situation, Jean quickly moved to stop his master. Did he just slap him? He sternly slapped Mathis right across the cheek. I love it! That's amazing. You just slapped him. Like, smack! How dare you? I love it. I don't know what. Jean, slap him again. <laughs> Jean? You need to stop right now, Mathis Claude. What are you. What you're doing now is no different from what your parents did to you. Hearing his words, Mathis' eyes swam in confusion. Huh? No different. Me? Then. He had no idea what he was doing. Worthless scum! How many times do I have to tell you the same thing? Oh, please, don't irritate me anymore. Why can't you speak like a normal child? No. I was just... I was just trying to move what was getting in the way of avenging my brother. Getting in the way? You mean her? The moment I met Mathis' quavering eyes... Quivering eyes? Wow. This book is filled with love, so I think it's the perfect fit for someone as kind as you. It's no longer the past I'm clinging to. It's the time I spend with you now that makes me the happiest. Yeah, there's something wrong with that button switch that he's got, too. I mean, also, trauma, so... Shut up! Let me go! You don't have the right to get in the way of my revenge. Let me go, death. Uh, uh, uh. It was as if he complete, he'd completely forgotten what he said and did before. Mathis suddenly went pale in the face. I did that to Spacey of all people. I, I called her death. I've never... Seen her as death before? Mathis held his head in his hands as he kept denying what he said in a mad frenzy. He suddenly fell into an uncontrollable state before curling up onto the cold floor. Mathis! I'll take the matter to- I'll take the master to bed. Uh, please get some water from the kitchen. Uh, okay. That Jean's so beautiful. I'm so jealous that you're in love with someone who's not me. Listen. Listen, I really hope the fan disc for this isn't more trauma. I hope, like, this is trauma the game. We know it's going to be sad and it's going to break our heart and everything's going to be awful. But I really hope the fan disc is like, okay, now here's the fluffy shit. You can have that. Like, at least give me the fluffy shit as a payout. And can I marry Jean? I know that he's got a girlfriend, but let's just pretend that that's fake. Because, God, he's gorgeous. A few minutes later, Mathis' cheeks were still flushed red as he slept. I gently moved his hair away and placed my hand on his damp forehead. His fever's pretty bad. And perhaps the master was acting so unreasonable because of the fever. I'm not sure. I've seen some of the children back at the orphanage suffer from high fevers, but Mathis' actions and words earlier weren't the same. Plus, before he got a fever, he knocked my ass out. In his case, it was like his whole personality changed. 
I've never seen or heard of anything like it before. Regardless, I do not want to believe the Master trampled on his bond with Camille of his own free will. I didn't want to believe it either. There was no way of knowing for certain until he woke up. Well, we did push his, like, crazy button. I was also worried about Mathis and wanted to prioritize tending to him before thinking about what to ask later. But it's like he doesn't know that that mark's there, or button, whatever it is. It looked like a button, guys! It looked 3D, okay? But he doesn't know it's there. Sorry, this will be a little cold. I gently placed a damp, cold towel on top of Mathis' forehead. Apart from his red cheeks, the rest of his skin was pale. It was obvious that he was struggling to control his temperature, and even the wet towel became warm very quickly. He's overheating! You gotta get some coolant into his robot body. He would probably have to endure this pain until Jean returned from the doctor with some medication to ease his fever. Nevertheless, I wanted to ease his burden. I kept changing the towel over and over again when... See, he wears his choker to sleep. That's a little awkward. Here's a CG in case... It... See? Thank goodness... You're back. I crouched to the floor and peered into Mathis's face. He looks like a beautiful young lass in this. He does. He actually looks like a beautiful girl. <laughs> I'm still confused about wearing the choker to sleep, though. How do you feel? Do you feel like vomiting? No, oh, I'm fine. He seemed to be suffering badly from his fever, but his voice wasn't as sharp as before. I breathed a sigh of relief but he was still sharp enough to feel a sense of regret. I... Sorry. I'm sorry. Tears fell from his eyes. His warm tears fell onto his pillow, leaving a wet trail. I... I... I did so many horrible things to you. Why? Why did I say and do things I haven't felt or thought of before? You and the novel. And they're supposed to be my most precious treasures. I gently placed my hand on Mathis's moist cheek. I'm relieved to know that what you said and did back then wasn't intentional, Mathis. First, I want you to focus on trying to reduce your fever. John should be back shortly with some medicine to help. I tried to excuse myself so that he could rest in private, but he stopped me by tugging gently on my sleeve. No! Listen to what I have to say while I still have the chance. First thing tomorrow, I'll disappear from you for good. What? What do you mean? Aren't you going to rest here a bit longer, Mavis? No. I find to kill Boro. So I have no intention of returning or spending any time here until that's done. I will go after him myself. Why? I able to look forward to a better future. Start to move in that direction, but... That was only because I gave up on revenge against Boro after he died. But now that he's back... I have to prioritize my desire for revenge. If I had a choice, I'd like to live a peaceful life with you instead of seeking vengeance. If I had a choice, you do have a choice! You always have a choice! Most of the time. But in this, you have a choice. I was so happy writing that story and seeing you smile. Each word I wrote, rejoice and love what was being written as if life was being born. That and more of you beyond everything else oh 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 okay i'm not i wasn't sure how far we were into his route you know what i mean like because we're in chapter what did it say three? Oh, that's true they only have like what four to five maybe in each route from what we understand okay i like damn we get into the love okay oh that's because we got to get to the happy we're like oh we're in love for him to get brutally murdered because remember this is the tragic kind of end or however they refer to it um, not the salvation end, it's the despair endings? Is that what they're called? I forget. But anyway, the tragic ends. So this is gonna end bad. Good times. But still, as I somehow accomplish my revenge, I can't move forward or live the rest of my life. I'm not even able to enjoy the happy times I spend with you because of it. So I'm gonna assume that he's gonna run off to get revenge and get murdered. And maybe in the salvation end, he doesn't die? I don't know if I trust the salvation ends to actually not still kill our boyfriends, but make it happier, I guess. Like, 
Like, oh, this he's going to run off and get murdered and we're going to be sad the whole time. And then the other one, we're going to be happy and in love and everything's going to be good and he's still going to die. Like, you know, like it's a happy death. We got to live out until our next, for the next couple of years. That's, that's still, what the fuck? And worse. Unless my vengeance is exacted, I may treat you horribly like before. Losing control of the dark emotions I feel. Which was why he needed to kill. Mathis said so as he roughly dried his tears with his sleeve. You're not going to tell me to stop my vengeance even after hearing that, are you? Honestly, I want to stop you. After all, you're putting yourself in harm's way. But before that, I can't forgive myself for bringing misfortune into your new life. And I'm also someone who people want to kill out of vengeance. Huh? Mathis, I'm death, remember? There were many who hated death for bringing about the demise of others. Considering that, it was nothing short of a miracle that I was still alive. The difference is Bordo actually stabs and murders people. You just, like, people just die around you. So, like, even though you are, are actually plaguing people, okay, um, because, like, Anko said, like, oh, I'm controlling your power to kill people. We're not doing it. We're not technically stabbing them. You know, we, we are killing people. We do have death powers. But, like, we're not intentionally doing it. I'm just hanging out here, and then you drop dead, and I'm like, yeah, it was probably me and my death aura. But Bordo's different when he's stabbing people, slicing them up, ripping out their hearts. But, like, a little bit different. You know what I mean? But, but, and that's just a rumor, and people are only accusing you of what's happened. I'm a murderer to anyone who believes I am, which is why I don't really have the right to discourage your revenge. Also, it's kind of... <laughs> I'm a murderer to anyone who believes I am. Yeah, the difference is, though, we actually are technically, we, we do still have the death power, but it's not like, well, I mean, if only, Boro's only a murderer if you believe he is. We've seen him murder, so it's a fact, you know? Us, it's a fact, but it's a secret fact. People are, like, assuming. So Mathis isn't wrong. People are just assuming because you're just standing there and then someone dies. Because you can't see me killing them, but I have magic death aura, so... Technically, I am a killer, but it's not. It's against my will. But there is one thing that bothers me. If you're successful in your revenge, what are you going to do after that, Mathis? Mathis let out a fevered sigh. Of course I'll pay for my sins. After all, even if it is Boro. Murderer regardless. I closed my eyes and sighed. I then opened my eyes. I see. I held back my tears and forced a smile. No matter the ending, I guess it'll be a while. Before I can read the rest of your novel. Huh? He blinked his eyes, moistened with heat. I was committed to being the first person to read your novel. But you're going to go after Boro and disappear from me. So even if you do kill Boro, and even if you do make amends, or even if you reach some kind of end... Some kind of end is the nice way of phrasing it. I will be waiting for you to return in the hopes that you'll complete your novel, Master Claude. Till then, I could study that other language using the book of poems in the materials he lent to me. That way, when he returned, we could read all sorts of books together. I feel like he ain't gonna return. Although, here's the thing. I like You're gonna spend the rest of his route with him missing? That seems weird. It's been like this. I can't seem to grow up because I'm foolish enough to strap myself to what happened in the past, but worry about, but don't deny what I'm doing. Far easier for the both of us if you just shrugged and told me I can do as I please. You're the one not giving me that option, Mathis. Although, to be fair, I think all of these... Well, I don't know, but I would assume all of these choices that we've made so far are the right ones that will also lead us to the good path. Which we can't get, obviously, but... Never do anything to isolate a person, no matter who it is. And that was what my brother told me when I was little. I don't like being either. Moving forward, no matter what horrible words were thrown at him for the, for the path of vengeance he chose, so long as he remembered what he was told... I'd always trust what Mathis said or did with confidence. For the record, I don't intend on simply doing nothing. 
To be honest, I don't want you to go after that killer alone. I can't agree with that. Assuming I was to work with Eve and everyone like before, he'd end up going after him to capture him. What that means is they'll get in my way of killing him myself. I understand, which is why I've decided... Mathis, I will do my very best. I will give everything I have to beat you to it. Huh? Oh, interesting. She's like, I'm going to find him and just hang around with him and then I'll kill him. Because that's the way it works. But we're going to stop here. Because it's the perfect place to stop, so. Anyway, I will see you guys next time. I hope you're fine with the pronunciations that we're actually doing. We fixed Bordo. We got that. I think that's better. Um, but I am not calling Cheetah Shooty. I'm not doing it again. <laughs> sounds ridiculous. Seriously, just walk around your house saying Shooty a couple times. Just say it once. It sounds ridiculous. Anyway, <laughs> I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.